ball beautifully bowled. Hi everyone, R86 the Cricket Tragic here. Welcome to another bat review. And today we have something very special, another throwback and a new spin on an old classic. It's the GM Maestro. So again, people growing up in the 80s and 90s will remember the GM Maestro because it was wielded by some of the great players of yesteryear, including Imran Khan, Zahir Abbas, Mike Gatting, Steve Waugh, a host of other players. So Steve Waugh actually went on to use the GM Maestro uh, to the until the early half of the 1990s as well. And what we have is the modern day spin-off of that classic bat. So this is the bat that we'll be reviewing today. It is the GM Master, it's the top end bat. It is the custom edition. Uh, first things first, if you have a look at the decals, this does take us back to the same color scheme of the GM Master of the 1990s not the 1980s. The 1980s, I believe it was dominated predominantly by blue and green. There was no red. But once we saw Steve Waugh using the Gun and Moore Maestro in the 1990s, especially against the West Indies in that classic 1995 series where he got a double ton, it was this particular color scheme. So this, as I said, this is the top end bat. It is the custom edition. So it is made from the finest uh, grade one plus English willow. Uh, having had conversations to uh, a couple of retailers, I believe this might just be under the player's edition, the Gun and More player's edition bats, but uh, please leave a comment in, uh, in the comment section if you think otherwise. But this is made from extremely high quality English willow. It's grade one plus. If you have a look at this particular bat, it's all sap wood. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine grains. Bring that closer to the camera. So it's got nine grains. Fairly straight. Looks really nice. Uh, the decals, again, with Gun and More, lots of detail. You've got the texture and the embossing. So you've got the little GM DXM logo embossed throughout the sticker. The same thing on the other side. It is the L55 uh, blade length, which is the standard blade length. So it's not the shorter version. It is a standard uh, size short handle cricket bat. In terms of the decals, again, lots of detail. Uh, very nice. It looks really, really nice with a really nice finish. Uh, got the Maestro on the edge as well with the traditional color scheme. It looks it it does look like a nice throwback to yesteryear. It's got a it's got a feel good factor to it. Uh, matching grips. It's got the nice red grip. I, li I really like this grip. I don't know what it's called, but it's really nice. It's not one of those fancy ones which goes zigzag. Uh, the grip itself is very old school as well. It's nice and soft and sticky, so it's 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 quite nice to hold. Got the GM logo down there, made by England's best. In terms of the shape, it's a very classical shape, uh, nothing too fancy. It is obviously a full profile, so you've got the dome shape completely convex. There is no concaving at all. Uh, it is not the biggest bat. Uh, it is not the biggest bat in terms of the dimensions. If we talk about the bat right from the top, starting off with a grip, very, very nice semi-oval handle. It is not too thick. Again, this is my personal preference. I like handles that aren't really too thick and I love that semi-oval feel. I haven't used this bat yet, uh, uh, but I plan on using it this coming week. Probably have a bit more insight about it. Um, but let's look at the dimensions and the shape of the bat. Uh, as I said, very traditional shape. I think about it and I used to have a couple of the old Shane Watson player editions, uh, the flare and the icon. Uh, back in the day and when I looked at this bat the shape's fairly similar although if my memory serves me right the Shane Watson player edition might have been a touch bigger but the overall shape is very very similar to that uh, just a traditional shape really with a chunk of the wood right here in the middle there is no duck bill toe it just gradually tapers off traditional uh, rounded toe which I personally prefer in terms of the actual measurements, 
I dread doing this right-handed caliper, so I actually did it before shooting this. Uh, yeah, it's not something I enjoy using. But again, not the very biggest of edges. Last time I measured it off camera. Hopefully I'll get it right this time as well. It's about 37 mil. In terms of uh, the profile, it extends. The measurement I took off camera would probably have been much more accurate. About 61, 62 mils. So not the biggest bat, but it isn't about being the biggest bat. You know, it's got a traditional shape, decent edges. I mean, 37 mil is not bad. It does go uh, fit in quite nicely through the gauge. So, uh, again, a really, really good cricket bat. In terms of the ping, if we do a quick ping test, nothing down there. You wouldn't expect it. Sweet spot things off really nice. Really nice. A bit dead down at the top, to be honest. A bit dead down there. But yeah, things off really well at the sweet spot. Things off really well down there. It seems like a hard press bat. If you've seen my uh, previous video on the Simon Super Tusker, I told you I was a big fan of the pressing of that particular bat. Uh, with this one, it's it's a bit hard pressed and I had a look at Gun and Moore's video on YouTube. Apparently they uh, press their bats twice. They've got two presses, one from the 1800s and their newest press actually is from 1947. So, and again, talking to a few people, I asked them, why do you think Gun and Moore bats are, uh, you know, so hard pressed? I've been told that it's perhaps because the balls in England are a bit harder. So it just aids with durability. Uh, what I can feel is this bat will open up. I mean, the sweet spot's fantastic. It's just up here where it's a bit tinny. It will open up, but it's gonna take time. So uh, might have to give this a fair bit of time in the nets and, you know, just doing throwdowns uh, for this bat to open up. Uh, yeah, uh, I personally am not a big fan of bats that are really hard pressed. This seems like one of them, but it's a nice bat. So I just have to be patient with it and Hopefully it'll open up, uh, so maybe use it in a few net sessions, uh, a couple of games, and yeah, just be patient with it and give it some time so that it does open up. It is a nice bat. Again, big fan of the shape, nothing fancy. Uh, very, very traditional shaped bat. There isn't a great deal of bow in this bat. It's fairly straight, minimal bow really. But yeah, as I said, the appeal of this bat is Obviously the look. Uh, the thing I really like about Gun and Moore is the quality of the finish. It is just immaculate. You can't fault the finish. Uh, there is a feel-good factor to picking up Gun and Moore bats because they are finished off so well, smooth, blemish-free, beautiful bat. Uh, the handle is perhaps one of the things that really got me uh, interested in this particular bat. Obviously, you know, growing up in the 80s, I was a big fan of the GM Mastro. Um, you know, what was it, the 1989 Ashes Steve, series, Steve Waugh scoring all those runs. Uh, 1995 against the West Indies, that double hundred. Uh, obviously an iconic bat. And yeah, it's it's a nice, nice reissue by Gun and Moore. They've had the Maestro available here in Australia over the years, especially down at Greg Chapel Creek, etc. But not in these old, uh, uh, in this particular old color scheme. I have not seen... The custom edition, which is the top end Maestro being sold anywhere else other than Greg Chapel Cricket Center. I believe Muleman's might be selling the Maestro. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but I don't think they've got the custom edition. They might have the lower editions, uh, the lower end ones or the mid range ones. But uh, I have not seen this particular bat being available anywhere else. Uh, but if you've seen it, please uh, uh, put your comment in the comment section. That'd be interesting. I've only seen it down at Greg Chapel Cricket Center. Uh, really nice bat. Got a feel for good factor. It's a it's a throwback to yesteryear for cricket tragics. And as usual with my reviews, we're gonna step out to the backyard, have a bit of a hit uh, down in my Puma V batting net to have a bit more understanding. 
and as usual I keep on forgetting uh, the weight I have measured it I'll put a picture of that uh, it's 2.9.6 ounces so 2 pounds 9.6 ounces uh, not very heavy it's a nice well balanced bat uh, it, uh, the pickup index, you know, the card that GM provides, it had a pickup index of two, so it does pick up really nice. You know, it does not feel two nine point uh, six. It probably feels about two eight and a half, uh, two nine tops. But it's got a very very nice pickup. So why don't we step outside, uh, hit a few balls, and see what it actually sounds like? All right, everyone, we're gonna bounce the ball. But before we do that, I found my gauge. It actually went missing. Let's just see if it goes through the gauge. It should easily go through the gauge. As you can see, there is ample space. So as I said with the measurements, it's not the biggest bat, just a very traditional shaped bat. All right, let's bounce the ball. We've got our trusted CA test star ball and see what this sounds like. So as I said, not great. The sweet spot, the middle, the business end's pretty good. Up top bit tinny will take a while to open up but the middle's really good as I said it does seem like a hard pressed bat and it will take some time to open up but the key thing about this bat is actually the feel beautiful feel beautiful balance so let's hit a few balls in my Puma V batting net and see what it actually sounds like all right everyone let's hit a few balls in this batting net and see what it sounds like. So it sounds really good off the middle, just reiterating that fact. Pretty dead down at the bottom and a bit thinny at the top. But off the middle, sounds really nice. So that is the Gun and More Maestro custom edition overall I really like this bat feels really good in the hands uh, there is a feel-good factor to it beautifully finished bat and yeah as I said just got to be patient with it uh, give it some uh, a lot of time in terms of knocking it in and it should be ready to go yeah all right guys stay tuned to the channel r86 the cricket tragic for more reviews and discussions on anything related to cricket so we're not just going to look at cricket bats but other cricket gear as well to help all you buddy uh, cricketers and cricket tragics pick out the right gear uh next week i've got something really special so stay tuned it's a gun and more as you can see it's got number one so this is my number one bat there are reviews of this particular bat on youtube but i have yet to see one that resembles this because this is really really special so stay tuned uh subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon for notifications and we've got something really special coming in next week thanks have a good one Got it! Patrick, slow ball.